Good morning. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church in Poughkeepsie, New York, and our virtual worship series. This video is for Sunday, October 8th, 2023, which is the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. Thanks for tuning in this morning. I'm glad you're here. Let's take a moment to frame our hearts and minds before God as we get ready to worship today. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your Spirit to know those things that are right, and by your merciful guidance, help us to do them through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now I'm going to read you two lessons today. First one being uh, the second reading, which will be from Philippians chapter 3, beginning in the middle of the fourth verse. Paul writes, If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Jesus Christ my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may obtain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Now, the Gospel according to St. Matthew in the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the people, Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves more than the first time, and they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? And they said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. So Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and this was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, you know, 
Paul had led a pretty good life. Just listen to his credentials that he lays out in the letter to the Philippians, right? He's from the right bloodline. His family had followed all the religious laws, and so had he uh, flawlessly. Paul had become a lawyer, a Pharisee, a leader within the Pharisees, and he was such a go-getter that he actively persecuted the early Christian church. He had never made a legal error and was the poster boy for Judaism in that day. He was the most perfectly righteous guy you would ever want to meet. Paul was the stuff of legend. <laughs> and then something happened, right? After he experienced Christ on that day, on the way to Damascus, everything about his life changed. Everything about his existence changed. Everything about his purpose changed. Everything about his definition of himself and his definition of success changed. He realized that personal accolades and credentials were not what God was looking for. In fact, Paul's pursuit of everything Paul was actually leading him in the opposite direction of his real goal. And now he's pursuing nothing Paul and everything Christ. And I love the word Paul uses when he refers back to his old days of self-glory. He calls all of it rubbish, uh, trash, garbage. But even better, because it's just a fun word, it's the Greek biblical word for it, which was the word um, uh, skubala or skubala. I just love that word. And it's the word for, you know, gross, stinky, wet, decomposing trash. Well, actually, it's worse, but I can't say the actual word. So there you are, skubala. <laughs> so if that's what he regards everything in his past, what is uh, your purpose in life? What is um, your purpose in faith? What's your goal with all of this? You know, like most of us are probably pretty righteous, um, but now we hear this and we realize that's not enough. And then Jesus hammers it home with today's um, wild gospel parable, right? The landowner leased his vineyard to some tenants who were supposed to operate the thing while he was gone. And now somehow over time, the folks who worked at the vineyard forgot whose vineyard it was and and you know, and it didn't take long, right? The parable only talks about one growing season. He leases the thing out. And when that harvest comes, in that short time, the tenants had decided they wanted to keep for themselves everything they had produced. And they rejected the actual landowner's attempts to enter. In fact, the workers were so passionate about wanting everything for themselves that they literally killed everyone who came to collect, including the landowner's own son. They had completely lost their sense of purpose. They had begun to think that it was all about them. And again, it didn't take long in Jesus' parable. How long does it take for us how long does God need to be absent or, or passive in our lives for us to think that everything we do is for us and everything we produce in our world is ours? You know, speaking of that, what do we produce in our daily lives? What is this vineyard that we are in? And why do we produce what we produce? Remember, Paul originally thought that producing things to better himself was what made God happy. But at the end of the parable, Jesus says um, he's going to take that kingdom away from people like Paul and give it to a people that produce the fruits of the kingdom. Now, last week we talked about being stewards. Remember, Stewards are people who watch over someone else's stuff, right? The landowner leased the vineyard to tenants 
who function as stewards. As stewards, we do not own the vineyard. The only thing a steward owns is the responsibility. In any case, what exactly are we responsible for in God's vineyard? What are the fruits that Jesus is looking for? Well, they are things that are um, produced for God's benefit. Things that God would grow, right? Things like um, love, mercy, compassion, um, justice, kindness, gentleness, patience, generosity, and peace. Paul outlines them later on in his letters when he talks about the fruit of the Spirit. So if that's the fruit of the kingdom, and that's what we're all trying to produce as fast as we can, um, um, first of all, wouldn't the whole world be a much better place, different kind of place? And, and secondly, if that's what we're spending all of our energy creating, why would we, like the parable, be afraid of the landowner wanting to come and collect all of it? Why would we, we be afraid of that? Because all the fruits of the kingdom, of all that stuff that we should be producing, there's not one thing that you can use for yourself or on yourself. There's not one of those that you can keep. You know, love, mercy, compassion, justice, kindness, gentleness, patience, generosity, self-control, peace. Those are only things we can give away because they are things you give to other people and you do with other people. There's nothing we can keep. Think about it. When we live, if we live to produce those kind of fruits in the vineyard that God gave us as stewards of his vineyard, it's easy to remember our purpose. And then, and then, like Paul, we can make the move from self to steward. We can move from credentialing to confessing. We can move from enforcing to empowering. We can move from lecturing to listening. But most of all, we can move from leverage to love. I don't know about you, but I can't wait till God comes back to collect all of those fruits because he's going to put all that into the wine press and turn all of it into grace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you all the time. Take a moment to share that peace with the people sitting with you watching this morning. Um, go outside. I know it's, it's probably it's around here. It's going to be cold today. Uh, put your coat on, go outside, talk to your neighbor. Um, you know, let them know that God wants to be with them too. Make a call, send a text, reconnect with somebody, show them the compassion and the peace and the kindness and the gentleness and all those things. Produce the fruits of the Spirit with your neighbors, with everybody you have a relationship with. You never know where that could lead. And in the meantime, gathered into one by that Holy Spirit, let's boldly pray the way Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon each one of you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. 
And remember, you are the body of Christ raised up for the world. So go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us this morning. And I hope you have a, a, a healthy and peace-filled week producing fruits of the kingdom wherever you go. And I look forward to seeing you all right here on video or right over there in church next Sunday. God bless you all.